and otherwise write it in your heart as we welcome our pastor, the beloved, Reverend John Scott. Thank you, Reverend Sonia. Social distance, can't forget. Good morning, family. And morning to all those who join us on the World Wide Web, and I believe in these times, more and more people are going to be joining us on the World Wide Web, social distance and all that being in, in style. But I want you to know that love is also contagious, and we are beaming megatons of love from beautiful Jamaica to all the world. We're just surrounding all of, of life kind with this love that knows no boundaries. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Boy, I think my hands have lost weight. <laughs> In Jamaica, we only had one way originally of digging out our hand middle, but now it's with soap, which is much healthier. So my hands have lost weight and my mind is weighed down <laughs> with all of the information, the do's, the don'ts, contained in countless videos, WhatsApp messages, and articles on how to cope with COVID-19. So I've been walking with my sipper and taking a sip every 15 minutes, only to be told this morning in the prayer room that another scientist has said, that, that's a myth, don't worry about it. Better you gargle with some salt and water and sip a little white rum. That wasn't from a scientist. That's from the Jamaican. <laughs> and if you can't get hand sanitizer, a little white rum also in the hand middle. Very good, very good. You know, <laughs> taste it first. You know, friends, as I was going into the supermarket on Thursday, the guard at the door spritzed my hands with sanitizer. So I said, I want them to come for him, so we not have none. <laughs> for those who don't speak Patois, that means we don't have any. And then somebody else said, okay, well, if you don't have hand sanitizer, you know, you can use, you can use wet wipes. They didn't have any. And they say, wash your hands. My, my, my mind starts, you know, the, the monkey mind kicks in. They say we must wash our hands, but the water is locked off at, at home until um, a few hours, for a few hours each day. And my, so my mind is going yada, 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 yada. And I had to stop, you know, and say, look here, don't get sucked into the panic. It happens very, very easily. You know, every news broadcast, I mean, you were, you were just, the whole world is on, on tenter hooks, you know. And so I calmed my mind and gave myself um, a meditation. Prayer and meditation is my soul sanitizer. I am undaunted by external facts or existing conditions. Can we say that together? Prayer and meditation is my soul sanitizer. And that soul is S-O-U-L, but it could also be S-O-L-E because I, I couldn't get any in the supermarket. So prayer and meditation is my soul sanitizer. Together? I am undaunted by external facts and existing conditions. So many of us may be understandably stressing ourselves concerning the what ifs and the supposed so and so's happened of the pandemic facing the world. And so I decided that my encouragement would be based on Jesus' advice found in his wonderful Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6, verses 25 to 30. And I want to read it to you. Therefore I say unto you, be not anxious for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body and what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than food and the body than raiment? Behold the birds of the heaven that they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, and your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are not ye of much more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit unto the measure of his life? And why are ye anxious concerning raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God doth so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, 
O ye of little faith. End of quote. My friends, the beautiful Jesus was advising us, do not be anxious. And in doing so, he is saying that you can't change your circumstances by worrying about yourself. Your anxious thoughts will not pay the bills, will not reap the harvest or fill the barn, and will not stop you from getting ill. In fact, worrying about what you don't want often ensures that you will get it, because the law of attraction magnetizes to you whatever you dwell upon. When you let go and relax and trust God, life will fulfill itself in you and as you. For the truth is, my friends, we are spiritual beings and our lives are lived from within out, not from without in. Just after Jesus advises us not to be anxious, he advises us in Matthew 6:33, and I quote, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. And we can read that to mean right useness of the law. And all these things shall be added unto you, end of quote. Here again, he's advising us to seek first to be, and then we will have. It is a law of life that to have more, you must be more. Success cannot be measured by the material goods you have accumulated. Success can only be known by the level of consciousness you have achieved. So instead of being anxious, become still, enter the kingdom by acknowledging your spiritual unity with infinite mind, and rest quietly in the truth of the divinity that you are the truth of your divinity. Remind yourself that you have a changeless relationship with the principle which knows no obstacles. Isaiah 65 verse 24 assures us, and I quote, before they call, I will answer. The I here is the presence and power in you that is always working for your highest good. So if you have a decision to make today, know that there is a right choice even before you begin to weigh the pros and cons. The Father knows. The God self of you knows. That within us which is totally true and pure and holy knows. And if we listen in the stillness, we will know what to do and when to do. Jesus then is saying, when you have a problem, no matter what it may be or how serious it may appear, don't worry about it. Don't take the problem inside and ponder it. That just brings more of the same. Instead, become still and acknowledge the guiding principle and the all-sufficient substance of the universe. Have faith in God and have faith in yourself and your innate divinity. Quote, be not therefore anxious for the morrow, for the morrow will be anxious for itself. And there's an interesting um, phrase that follows that. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Unquote. I used to wonder about that. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. But simply put, it's saying don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow can take care of itself. Indeed, every day has its own challenges. And the word evil here simply means the unrevealed potential for good. Within every situation, there is an unrevealed potential for good. And that is true of this pandemic that's facing us too. With, within every apparent evil, there is something wonderful to be, to be experienced and to evolve. I can tell you that last night in, in going over and preparing this encouragement, for the first time ever since I've become a minister, I didn't have to compete with the blaring music of an entertainment center. That's a stone's throw from, my, from where I live. The, the silence was absolutely beautiful. And you notice that, is it my imagination or is there less reports of crime? And the place has just become, people are focused on something else. Isn't it amazing when the world focuses on, on something else, all kinds of wonderful things happen. The Indian Jesuit priest, Anthony de Mello, known for his storytelling in his book, uh, Rediscovering Life, tells a story 
of how we need to let go and to stop being ourselves being tied down to the old paradigm, the old ways of doing things. And this pandemic is changing the way the world does things. According to the story um, Father DeMello tells, a camel trader is journeying across the Sahara Desert. His party pitches a tent for the night. The servants drive pegs into the ground and tie the camels to the pegs. Then they come and say, Master, there are only 19 pegs and we've got 20 camels. How do we tie the 20th camel? The master said, oh, don't worry, these camels are stupid animals. Just go through the motions of tying him and he'll stay put all night. Which is what they did. And the camel stood there convincing everybody. The next morning, they lifted the tent to continue on their journey, but the servants came back to the master to complain that all the camels were following except the one that wasn't tied. He refused to budge. The master said, oh, you forgot to untie him. So they said, oh yes, and they went through the motions of untying him, and you know what the result, the animal followed. De Mella makes the point that this is an image of the human condition. We are scared about things that are not. We are tied to things that don't exist. Their illusions, their falsehoods, their beliefs, they are not realities, but they keep us rooted to this spot, unable to move on with our lives. It's like the Zen master, you know, who was exceedingly gracious to a group of visiting university dons, you know, very, very learned dons. And he was gracious, but he refused to discuss any matters of metaphysics or theology or um, any of their, of their concepts. So his, his disciples marveled at this and said when they were gone, can, how come you didn't answer any of their theological questions? And his reply was, can one talk about the ocean to a frog in a well or about the divine to people who are restricted by their concepts? And as somebody wise also said, don't cast pearls before a swine, it was Jesus. He wasn't calling people swines. What he was saying is it doesn't make sense to present concepts of higher thought and higher consciousness to people who are not ready for it. And that is the truth. So my friends, if you are tied to an old fear or a new fear caused by the current situation, the fear of failure, which is preventing you from initiating a new venture that you have been contemplating, or perhaps you are trapped in, in the well of your old prejudices about people that are different from you, or tied to real deep fear about the current situation in the world, you need to get this, the soul sanitizer. The S-O-L-E sanitizer is return to your stand on principle and to your reliance on God. I love the idea of not talking to a frog in a, in a well about the ocean. And frog, F-R-O-G, can also be made to, to be an acronym for fully rely on God. And so this is a time when we're called upon to fully rely on the principles that we, that we study and that we believe in this teaching. So it brings me to part one of your assignment for this week. You know you weren't going to get away. I know business with no social distance. You have to get an assignment. And your assignment, your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is to read Matthew 6, verses 25 to 30 every morning for the week, but as long as you, as, you can, as you can keep it up. Do it before leaving home if you're going out to work. And maybe you want to put a little sticky note on your desk that just says, Matthew 6, 25 to 30, to remind you, do not be anxious. Swallow a frog. Fully rely on God. Part two of your assignment is to contemplate the blessings that the current pandemic is bringing to the world. You know, the student workbook for the practitioner's class that we're currently doing, I'm currently facilitating, asks the students to imagine the whole, the whole of 
whole, the universal whole and wholeness, and to regard it as a symphony that is eternally playing one song. Every, I quote, every part of the universe is an instrument in the infinite symphony. Every instrument has a part in the one song, and all the parts are required to make the one harmony. As one tunes in and listens to that universal melody, one becomes aware of the different parts and can begin to discern their own part in the one song of creation. You can hear when your notes are not in harmony with the rest of the world and you need to tune in. You know, sometimes when the orchestra is out and the, a, good, a good conductor can tell that the first violin is, is out a little bit. Um, it's an amazing ability. But when you listen within to your own thoughts and your own beingness, you too will feel when you are out of tune, when you're out of sync with the rest of the universe. And you can just stop. And the wonderful thing about being in this teaching is, we, yes, we fall, yes, we slip, yes, we make mistakes, but we become so, so present to, to our need to, to watch our thoughts and to watch our reactions and to watch our words, that the minute we slip, we can, we can steady ourselves and return to center and begin to sing in tune with the rest of creation again. I understand that something amazing is happening in Italy and in fact in other parts of the world. You know, they're locked down. The people are singing. Confined to their homes all across the country, they are opening their balcony windows and singing. Wow. A Roman Catholic priest, Father Richard Hendrick, expresses it in this poem, which is called Lockdown, and I'd like to share it with you. Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But they say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and gray and clear. They say that the streets of Assisi, in the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sound of family around them. They say that a hotel in the west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number throughout the neighborhood so that the elders may have someone to call on. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary. All over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality, to how big we really are, and to how little control we really have. To what really matters? To love. So we pray and we remember that yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but there does not have to be the disease, dis-ease of the soul. Yes, there is even death but there can always be a rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how to live. Awake to those choices now. Today, breathe. Listen. Behind the factory noises of your panic, the birds are singing again. The sky is clearing. Spring is coming, and we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul, and though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing. 
and though you may not be able to touch, open the window of your soul and sing. And so I thought it would be lovely if together we stood this morning and sang our beautiful national anthem. Can we do that? Namaste. <laughs>